6 o'clock, I don't know what happened. Okay, the reason we're all here tonight is at this point is the public hearing for the town of Mary Mining Moratorium. Um, right now, it's what we're all here for. I'm going to turn it over to Joao. I can do that. Turn it all over to Joseph. 
Thank you very much, Joel. Um, let me take my mask off. That's okay with me. I'll sit here for that. So as Joel said, I'm Joe Spisky. I'm here representing the town of Newry. And uh, what we're here to talk about tonight is uh, whether to adopt a temporary moratorium that would apply to uh, new mineral extraction um, permits being issued by the towns that would be valid for a period of 180 days and would give uh, towns some time to uh, assess um, uh, improvements or amendments to its existing ordinances uh, to regulate the set of activity on a permanent basis going forward. Um, we took a look at the existing ordinances in the town of Newry and found that there really isn't uh, adequate regulation of, of this type of, uh, this scale of mining activity in the, in the current ordinance, which really contemplates smaller type of uh, borrow pits, gravel, mining, that's, that type of excavation. There is a provision for uh, mineral extra extraction in the shoreland zone but there's only a small percentage of the town that's actually in the shoreland zone. So uh, we had prepared a memo for the town a couple of weeks ago, um, and I thought I would just distribute those um, to the select board members and the members here. I have extra copies if anyone wants to take a look. But uh, this is basically summarizing what the Wells already said about, about the, uh, the circumstances in which a moratorium to the random economics would be appropriate when there's a, uh, the existing regime, uh, the existing ordinance and regulations that are in place are really um, inadequate to uh, regulate the type of activity. Uh, so uh, I just thought I, I just wanted to mention that briefly. It would be a temporary measure to give the down some time. Um, to develop a more robust uh, set of regulations governing activities going forward and not apply to existing operations that are already uh, underway. So uh, I'll leave it at that for now if you have to answer any questions. But thanks for your, thanks for your time. <laughs> All right, now I guess we will open this up to questions. I'm not sure who will be able to answer those questions, but probably Joe will probably be the likely candidate. Um, um, any anything that Nuri does um, that would be in addition to what the state already requires? I mean, the state of Maine has put into place some pretty tough. Uh, restrictions or requirements for mining. So they, they will apply no matter what for me, that's right. I'm going to say that these would be our own, they could be more serious than the state, but they yeah. may not be. Uh, yeah, like the state requiring huge deposits. I mean, actually, right now we don't really have anything to I come with this. I'd like to make a brief presentation on behalf of the property. That's okay. Did you want to announce the name? Yeah, Darren Martin with Ranch Consulting, main license geologist. Got a very couple things up here. This isn't a public hearing, is it? This is a public hearing. This is a public hearing.
City of Maine. My company, Rancis Consulting, was hired by Mary and Gary Freeman, the property owners, um, to help them out with uh, the, the geological and the engineering assessment of their um, spy money deposit identified on, on Columbia Mountain. First of all, thank you, citizens of uh, uh, Murray and Slip for allowing me to speak. Um, I have over 17 years of experience working in the state of Maine, mostly doing environmental cleanup projects, clean water work, hydrogeologic projects. I understand Maine geology um, and I understand this area very well. Um, first off, I want to talk about, try to give some clarification on the need that this ordinance is not needed. Um, basically, the uh, the deposit here is a payment type grant, and the operations of this grant quarry is basically going to be a grant quarry, very similar to a sand gravel pit. There's going to be no processing of ore that's going to contaminate the environment. It's going to be basically just blast rock and haul rock, and that's it. The deposit itself is, like I said, it's a payment type grant. So, a payment type grant. That looks like this. Large crystals, mostly quartz, feldspars, and other accessory minerals. Most of the feldspars, we get a little basic chemistry here, are alkali and alkaline metals. It's calcium, sodium, lithium. Lithium is, is considered an alkali metal, although it's not metallic. It's not metallic in nature. It's an alkali metal because it's highly Conducted to electricity. Same with the other alkali metals and the alkaline metals. This deposit is formed as uh, a cooled magma. So it's basically lava before it exits the Earth's surface, buried deep underground, hundreds of feet, maybe thousands, 400 million years ago. Um, and it is, um, it's not what's considered a sulfitic ore which is like the type of ore that um, has typical acid mine drainage uh, properties. This is not that. Apples to oranges comparison. The, the sulfitic ore deposits are the ones that contain precious min, uh, metals, semi-precious metals, gold, silver, stuff like that that has been identified in northern Maine. Um, the Callahan mine out of Brooks is an example, not here. This is strictly a pigment type grant. That's all it is. Very inert quartz. This is pretty much mineral glass. Inert. Most of this stuff naturally weathers to, perform, to form some of the maize, you know, cleanest aquifers, uh, sandy beaches. Um, it, like I said, it does not lead to acid mine drainage. Um, you know, Maine has a proud history of grant quarries. Essentially, once again, this is going to be a granite quarry. Um, some of them have provided granite for famous buildings, monuments throughout the world. Um, and this would provide a mineral that's essential for getting the world off of fossil fuels. Um, this is a geologic map created by the United States Geological Survey. Um, the deposit is right in here, it's Plumbago Mountain. This is the Ellis River Valley. You have White Cat Mountain over here, Rumford's over here, Nuri's over here. Um, as you can see, this is all Devonian Age granite. And I'm happy to uh, show this map. So this is a Google Earth image. I can get that straight of the location of the existing quarries on Plumbago Mountain. The site property is located right here. As you can see, there's been a long history of granite quarrying for gems, tourmaline, barrels, such, on Plumbago. This would be no different than that. Um, and actually, as you can see, it's so remote um, that you know there would be no impacts to residential properties drilled private wells, public water supply systems, all of that is actually included 
by the performance standards by the main DEP. So it's part, of a, a, it's part of the application process. You have to go through and you have to determine that there's going to be no adverse impacts, and if there could be, you would, you would identify that and mitigate it, or not do it. So you've got stuff like significant wildlife habitat and protected areas. Groundwater protection, provisions for solid waste management, natural buffer strips, protected natural resource buffers, roads, property boundaries, erod erosion sediment set sedimentation control, stormwater, blasting. I could go on and on. This is already governed by the main DEP for their oversight of any license of a granite quarry or a gravel pit throughout the state. Um, I took an oath as a licensed geologist that I would not involve myself with any project that I felt was not above board. Same with the licensed geologist in my office and the licensed engineers that we've been working on this project, if that, if that, if that does happen. Um, I know that the freedoms look forward to working with the town, and we do not feel that the, the, the moratorium is necessary because it could also impact future gravel pits, other quarries, and, and, and other operations throughout the town. Um, that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. You want to say something about this? Sorry. Sure. <coughs> yeah. Um, a couple of questions. What's what's the potential area that's going to be mined? Oh, great. And share acres. Where? Gary, do you want to answer that for you? That's fine. Yeah. So. Uh, the, the permit application for the DP, the first step would be um, either a, a five to ten acre size for it. So in this area here, just for reference, this is likely about, I would say, ten acres here. So a disturbance in the landscape, this is like the peak of, this is Plumbago Mountain, with him. it's a series of peaks, but it's, it's, it's situated in kind of this valley between these two peaks. Um, the only way you would ever see this quarry, I believe, is actually from the satellite. I don't, I don't know if there's any mountains up here that would actually have a view to it. Um, but yeah, so the disturbance would be very similar to that. And the performance standards by the state require that after the, the actual quarrying operation is done, that the land is reclaimed. So that sl slopes are stabilized and it's safe for, the, or safe for any trespasser. Basically, the, the, the property is so remote, you have to get there by private access roads, which are gated. So there's really no risk right now to the public, uh, unless they were to trespass. Uh, but like I said, the state holds those assurances as part of the permitting process that it will be reclaimed to their performance standards. Yes, by Bruce Pierce Planning Board. Um, so just out of curiosity, who, where would be the entrance exit or the travel ways of this mine? Would this be over the Ellis River Route 5 section or come down through Howard Pond? Um, you know, where, 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 where would the traffic be? It's through the Sway, Swayne Quarry over in Andover. So that's right off the, it's right off the aerial here. This is Route 5, Ellis River Road. You're like right up here. So that's, so the traffic will be on Route 5? Well, yeah. Okay. So, it's late in the afternoon, and I'm just, you know, kicking off all the way So, what you're saying is that this money project is going to have no impact on the town of Nuri, geologically speaking, and as far as it seems, with the state regulations that are already in place, that were amply protected. From any adverse effect of any money operations. That's correct. That's what you're saying. That's correct. So think of this as any other grand quarry in the state of Maine. Hundreds of them. For hundreds of years. It's it's no different. And you are a geologist and an expert on the thing. Yes. Thank you. Yes. You was reference that the Lithium material is hundreds and thousands of feet below the surface? That's when it was formed. Yes, it was formed as a magma chamber. Uh, that's, when the, that's when the mineral crystallized out of its magma 
form. Think of it kind of like lava underground. How far did they have to go now to that? Oh no, so what happened was, so, you know, 400 million, 400 million years ago, that form underground, you know, 400 million, 400 million years of erosion and mountain building uh, has basically brought everything up to the ground surface. Can I just talk about your name, please? Carol? Carol? Yeah. Last name? R-A-V. Oh, C-E. Gotcha. Got, okay, thank you. <laughs> So we haven't that we haven't seen lit, lithium below 70, 75 feet from the surface. And would that be blasted to get out? How does that then get out of the earth? Yeah, yeah. I mean it would be a stand, standard core pouring operation where the holes are drilled and blasted. And what we plan to do is we plan to take the, the Rock to a mill in Andover, and then experiment with uh, machine learning and ca cameras to uh, separate the spodumene out from the stuff that you don't want. The reason we can do this is because the spodumene is so coarse. Nor normally, in the other mines in the world, that it's about the size of your thumb th thumbnail. These things are like trees. So, so, so we use cameras and computers to say, because it has its own shape, you know, it looks like a little, little block of wood when it's blasted. We can, that we believe, we can easily tell the difference between spotting being good and quartz not so good. You know, you can just tell by looking at this. And, uh, so that we have the uh, Swayze Hill building over there almost filled up with stuff. So what you're suggesting is to have a deeper area that would likely be disturbed. Is there any timeline on how long it would take to go from the digital to the 10 acre? I don't know. That would be dictated probably by economics. Yeah, it would be in three years or so, I think. I, I think that would be over. So what happens when you've done this whole process and you've taken the good stuff out, what do you do with all the bad stuff? Where does that go? Um, what happens to the waste? Okay, the waste e either goes back into the hole to uh, reclaim it, or go into your driveway. Oh. There's a question in the location process. What does that entail? I don't know. Is that part of the that would be yeah, the site? Nor normally in the spot you mean mine, what they use is they use it a dead dense media and and it's kind of like little walls, little metallic balls that weigh slightly uh, slightly more than the jump rock. So that the, basically that the jump rock is float, floated out. So it isn't really uh, you know, it isn't really anything other than ferro-silicon beads. That you adjust the 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 density to or try to get the gar garbage rock out. So is there liquid involved? I'm thinking about water. Uh, General Baker Planning Board, Mr. Freeman, what impact would a hundred day moratorium have on your operation? Well, you know. We have a really high bar to get over with, and that's DEP. You know, and and we have the main mining laws. So 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 I mean, uh, uh, you know, the more more touring passes. Uh, I really can't answer that, but 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 we're going to keep. 
plugging away on our engineering work and so 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 on and, and that my wife and I want to do this small scale on our own and we probably had a dozen offers you know to buy the whole thing and, and, and that we don't want to go there you know, we just want to do the pokey puppy step by step. And I can tell you that I highly doubt there's one point five billion dollars worth of spots five years there. So so what I hear you saying is that you're still in the processing development stage and it doesn't sound like the hundred and eighty day moratorium will affect that much. Is that correct? Aaron, maybe you can speak speak to that. No, I don't think so. Basically, yeah, basically the, the state application process uh, is another, I believe, three to six month process for them to review everything and go <coughs> back to us with any questions and, and mitigation measures and so forth. Okay, so what I hear is that our 180 day moratorium would not impede anything. Likely not. Uh, so, from, from my understanding, that the state won't approve it or, or take action on it unless the town approves it first, though. We don't have the property. Uh, so yeah, the, town, the town wants to put this guy's project on hold, and he's basically in limbo for another 880 days, and then he has to go to the state. So if, if this gentleman just wants to find granite, like Steve does, okay, if he just wants to find granite and was on the front page of the paper, he wouldn't have a problem at all. But because he actually has something that's tremendously more valuable than granite, everybody's up in arms because somebody put a billion dollars in the newspaper. So, I mean, to me, I'm just wasting my opinion because nobody's told me to shut up yet. But, you know, if, if he wanted to go through the state's property and, and mine granted, it would be, it'd be no brainer. Go ahead. It would basically be fine. I think the process of mining lithium and refining lithium is a little different than mining lithium. The mining is the act of the process. So, we have to go the process afterwards. The process afterwards is the same place in Europe. Now, I'm not sure if it was aware of it. Okay, man, okay. I, 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 can I speak? Gary, Dan, you want to speak? Thank you. Yeah. I personally went to the site on Friday with Steve, with Gary. Yeah, can you move that map now so we can see the Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> kind of like being in the corner. <laughs> it's fine. I went to the site. Okay, I wanted to know. I'll be honest, I don't know very much about mining. I know even less about rocks. Um, I learned a lot. I learned uh, that reading the newspaper article, all those links were to mines in South America, or most of the ones that I clicked on were all in South America. They weren't even in this country. Uh, the mining process that I saw on Gary's property was very similar to the process that I saw on Steve's land. It's a similar thing. The process of taking, I have my little rock right here that I picked up that day, of turning this into lithium isn't going to happen here. It's not going to happen in the state. It's not even going to happen in New England from what I understand. There's, if I remember correctly from Friday, there's a plant being built in Nevada and there's one that's idle in one of the Carolinas, if I'm correct, is what Gary told me. So what I was explained is these rocks are going to be hand-picked off the conveyor belt for now, and then they're going to look into doing the camera selection to sort things, very similar to other whatever companies when they sort stuff out. And then it will all be shipped from here to the processing plant. So there's nothing going to be drilled into the ground, pumped into the ground, and we're not going to see the pictures that the internet showed. That's not even the process that's going to take place here. So that's my two cents. And if one major application of this five G, because the iron in it is so low that it can go into the glass. And when they use it for glass making, they just sh sh shovel it right in, just like that, just, just right into the oven. And they make 
cooktop stoves. They make uh, corn, corn, corningware. And uh, that would be a big, big application for it because the iron is uh, so low. If the iron gets uh, too high, the glass turns green. What are you so, uh, I think it goes to say that uh, you just contradicted uh, what you said about uh, shipping ore. You said there was going to be a facility in Andover that floated things to the top. No. Well, yeah, yeah, that we are going to use. That mechanical or is that chemical? Mechanical. Totally mechanical. No chemicals at all? None, none whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So, my name is Amy from our the town administrator for the town of Murray. I want to be really clear. I'm a little concerned about what was said that if the town doesn't authorize this, that the state will stop. The whole reason we're bringing this moratorium ordinance to the voters is because there is not a process in place currently to authorize this type of mining in the town of Newry. Grab a pit? Absolutely. Borrow a pit? Absolutely. This type of mining? No. We do not have a process in place, and that's what we're asking the voters to consider today, is take a moratorium, let's set up a process so that we can authorize this type of money in the future. We're not saying we don't want this type of money. We're just saying we need to take the time, do our due diligence, look at what this looks like, and put the proper regulations in place so that we can authorize this in the future. Am I correct? Absolutely right. So even if we don't have this process in place, anybody who wants to do this has to follow the state regulations, though. Right. But I was just told that if we say no tonight, that the state right. No, no. I just want to. I just want to make sure that I. Yeah. I just want to make sure that I understand whether we have one or not. They still have to follow all the state, for whatever the procedure is. But it really does make a lot of sense for the town to know that this type of mine is going on in town. If this hadn't hit the paper, we wouldn't know until the DEP went through its total regulations. We wouldn't have a clue. There is one town meeting that requires part of the application process. There is a public That's information meeting. what I'm saying. So if we had a town meeting problem, so at some point it has to come to us, but it really does make more sense if we had a part of it as a YouTube <coughs> Everybody has to follow the same process. Everybody knows what they have to do. My name is Jody Giddings, um, and I, I, I believe that we've already heard that the 180 days will have no impact on the process. So I don't understand why we aren't willing to listen to Amy and take the time to see what we need to do so that the proper channels are established. There's a question in the back. Right so, hi, my name is Brian Peterson. Uh, she was saying this type of mining that it doesn't, there's not this type of mining occurring. Well, it is occurring. It occurs at Steve Swayze's quarry. The exact same kind of rock is being mined at his quarry that we are mining at Palaver Norm. So this type of mining is occurring, and it's occurring without issues already in Andover. So us mining the same type of pentatite that Steve Swayze's mining is going to have the same results as far as the environmental impact. So. It already is occurring. This type of mining that we do, the granite blasting, scooping it up with an excavator, putting it in a truck, putting it down, crushing it to a smaller size, right there, that can be used directly from that size to a product, is the exact same thing that Steve does. His product is used in streets and driveways and other projects. But it is the exact same thing. Is that an end over? And that's that's an Andover, but it's the same deposit. It's the deposit that's in Newry. But it is occurring. This type of mining is occurring here. State regulated too, and it's state fully state regulated. Thank you. It's also uh, regulated by MSHA, which is the federal government. Mm -hmm.
Okay. So, not to be devil's advocate here, though, we just heard that it takes three to six months to go through the DEP process. So, if anybody in this uh, in this room wanted to start that right now, you wouldn't likely be able to start digging in the ground until July. But what if somebody already started it? We wouldn't know. This is this is the reason why we we <laughs> want to have some but right. If, if somebody <laughs> just wanted to start a gravel pit, you, yeah. I mean, I whatever they want to do in their land. I, well, no, we might no, do that, and I would get a call, and I would have to go talk to them and start the process. A gravel pit's different than, than my I, I understand yeah. that, but you just said that we don't hear about it until... We wouldn't hear about it until we wouldn't file these. We put them out in public, in a newspaper, with some kind of like a, a public notice, right? That's yeah. correct. That's yeah. correct. That's DP, DP, DP requires that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else got any questions? If not, we will conclude the public hearing and we will go on into the town meeting. Portion. So it is 644. Thank you. Thank you. And the name of the state of Maine, and you are hereby notified and warned in the town of Erie and said county and state qualified by law to vote on town affairs and to meet the very good in said town on Tuesday, the 30th day of November, directly after the public hearing that starts at 6 o'clock in the evening. Well, Act on the following articles, Article 1 and through 2, as set out below. Article 1, to choose the moderator by secret ballot in guard at said meeting. Just hoping that somebody will make a motion that we have for maximum. Second. We move and second that we're going to be moderator and vote. Second. 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 What How many do you need? We need three. I can do one. Let me borrow your pen. I have one in the car. I forgot that. Third one. <laughs> <laughs>
and I won't take a move to question motion right at the beginning of the discussion. And I'd like to recognize any non-residents before we get out of the way. How many non-residents do we have? Basically around this perimeter here, okay. If you want to speak at some point, we have to have a motion to allow you to speak. It doesn't mean you can't. We have to have a motion to speak. And with that, I will read the article. Article 2, shall an ordinance entitled Town of Newry Mining Mortuary Ordinance be enacted? Could I have a motion on Article 2, please? We have a motion on Article 2, please. Thank you. Sorry. Moved and seconded to be approved. Discussion? Any discussion or questions? You've had all of our questions answered in there. Very good. If there's no further discussion, I'll ask you to vote. All those in favor of Article 2 are read and not discussed, please indicate. Thank you. Any opposed? Okay. Now we've got a vote. We've got a count. Right. Let's get back to hold on. Everybody put them down. We'll start from the beginning. All those in favor of Article 2? I'll sign it up. I'll go in favor. 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 I'll go